Hi, I'm Tara Kelly, instructor of English at the University of North Florida, and this video is on Gunther Kress's multimodal discourse analysis. When you approach a reading, it's important to first look through the reading and see how it's organized. If you look through Gunther Kress's work, and I'm going to show it to you here, the very first few pages in this first section, which he has called What is Multimodal Discourse Analysis? Gunther Kress does two things. One, he situates the reader within the conversation of discourse analysis by giving you some information about what has been done in the past. And so he names a lot of previous researchers and presents a lot of key terms. In this section, it's not so important to know who these past researchers were. It is very important to know the grounding for Cress's ideas in his text. So what you are looking at here in this text is you should be looking for key terms. So for example, we have this idea of coherence, which is very important. We have the idea of power. So what you should be doing is going through, looking through for the key terms and here I say, how is coherence made? How do we interpret coherence power? So what you're looking for are some of the key ideas. These are the foundations for the rest of, of Cress's argument. So you want to look for that. And then think about the title. The title is Multimodal Discourse Analysis. So of course, what you should notice is that Cress is presenting another model of discourse analysis and of analyzing discourse. He is talking about the me. He is talking about uh, what multimodal discourse is, what it does, and then why to do it. And it's from that why that his main argument comes. And so what we should be looking for is not what he is doing, which is not his argument, but why he is presenting this. And that is his argument. And in a summary, when we're writing a summary, the first sentence should be in Gunther or in multimodal discourse analysis, Gunther Kress presents this argument. And you should be talking about that argument. From the why is where we get Kress's thesis and his claim. And so we should be looking for that when we're reading is to say, why does this author present this idea? And what is what does the author want me to get from this presentation of the idea? Part of his foundation is that multimodal discourse analysis is cross-cultural. It reveals meaning making and it affects all forms of composition. Here, composition is discourse, the composition of one's discourse. He is saying that this current conversation is part of an ongoing conversation. Like I said, he provides definitions and theorists. And so think about which of those definitions are important. Maybe list them. Think about the word multimodal. It means many modes. And what Cress is saying is that there are many modes or many ways to examine discourse. And he is presenting all these different modes or ways. Some of the really important key terms that you should be looking at are discourse, linguistics, ideology, text, interpretation, coherence, power, meaning making, and social semiotics. Even though we're not going to summarize that introduction, we should understand the terms so that we can enter the conversation. Um, if you have any trouble with any of these terms, make sure that you ask your peers or ask me or ask somebody in the writing center in order to help you understand these key terms, these modes that he's discussing in his text. And then from the text, he's saying that we put these modes together in an ensemble of meaning. This idea of meaning making is really important to Cress. He says that we make meaning through agency, identity, social semiosis, knowledge, and power. Knowledge, he uses the term uh, epistemology. Epistemology, ology being the study of something. Epistemology is the study of knowledge, of how knowledge is made. And what he's saying here is that we make knowledge through these social interactions, that knowledge is made because of the agency that we have to accept the independence we have to accept another's ideas, the identity of both us and the speaker, and also the power that the speaker might have or, uh, over us. And the power is um, also in terms of the credibility that we might give to a speaker. So all of these key terms, agency, identity, social semiosis, knowledge, and power, are really important to developing his idea. 
And what he is saying is that these modes are shaped by social and um, they shape the social. So we are shaped by what we, all of this information that we are given, and we also shape it. This is not very different from G. However, Cress is presenting the ideas in a different way with different language, coming from a different lens. A quote that I personally pulled out, not one I would put in a summary, but one that I think is important, is on page 189. Multimodal discourse analysis opens the possibility of moving against the reductiveness of the 20th century generalizations and abstraction toward a full account of the impact of humans. He's saying that if we look beyond generalizations and abstractions and we look deeply into the agency, the power, the identity, that we can draw out meaning for these re, uh, interactions. What does it mean to have this discourse? How is knowledge developed? How is meaning made? And he's really interested in that idea of making of meaning. He says that meaning cannot be understood without the recognition of all of these different modes. Um, so basically, he is giving a full account of how meaning is made. And it's really important to understand that. And he gives all those different modes. If we look at Gunther Kress versus James Paul G. they are both presenting uh, the audience with a model for discourse analysis. The big difference comes from their own personal lens. James Paul G. is a linguist, he's a social linguist, and he's saying that he's really focusing on language, and um, he also focuses on this idea of social and discourse communities, whereas Kress pulls away from the idea, I, um, idea of this idea of community, but he is also talking about making of meaning coming from a cognitivist and a education background. He is really looking at knowledge, which makes sense as somebody who is an educator, that he would draw from this idea of epistemology, of knowledge making, of meaning making. So these two are presenting two different but yet similar ways of analyzing discourse. And it's important to note that the big difference is the, the big difference in why they approach it differently is their lens, their background. And that's why we always look at who is the author and what, um, what are they bringing to this conversation. And I hope that this video has helped you not only understand some of what Cress is doing in his text, but also give you an idea of how to read Cress so that you can write your summaries. And then I also help, hope that it helps you understand a little bit about why G and Cress approach the discourse analysis in different ways. So I hope you have a great day and good luck on your projects.